Hi, everybody. This is Mike. Uh, and today we're going to talk about land IQ and almond acreage. I have with me Joel Kimmelshu, um, and we'll kind of dive a little bit more into what land IQ does, but a little bit about Joel. Joel is a founding partner and principal soil and agricultural specialist with land IQ. He holds a PhD in soil science with a concentration in water resources from North Carolina State University, in addition to his certification as a professional soil scientist. He has over 27 years of consulting experience focusing on partial and applied solutions for the development and management of agricultural-based soil, water, plant systems, especially irrigated systems. Joel, thank you for coming on. Happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about kind of who you are and kind of how you've gotten here? Yeah, sure. So um, we'll start from the very beginning. I grew up on a family farm. That family farm still exists today in Butte County, a little town south of Chico called Durham. Uh, we grow almonds and walnuts and a few row crops. Uh, one of my brothers still uh, runs our family farm and all five kids of all of us, five kids have an interest in that. Yeah. So that's my first education. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, prob- perhaps my best actually. Yeah. Uh, Did you grow up working on the farm? Oh yeah, I yeah. irrigated every summer for 13 summers. Wow. Zero pay. Yeah, of that's course. That's the way it goes. Of course. Right. <laughs> of course. Still not getting paid. <laughs> yeah. So I learned that I uh, that was great work, but probably should get an education. So I went to Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo for my bachelor's and then did um, my master's and PhD at North Carolina State University okay. and then applied for jobs all over the United States and ended up practically in back in my backyard in yeah. California. So okay. I hail from Sacramento right now. Yep. And um, Land IQ has been in existence as a company for, oh, let's see, since 2007. I think we had our 15-year anniversary this year in July. And uh, we started with five people, and we're up to about 38 now. And how did you guys get into, um, like, spatial recognition or kind of what you're doing now? Because, I mean, your background sounds like it's more uh, agronomist or soil-based and water management. So how did it transition to kind of what it is now? Yeah, that's a good question. So over time, we we knew um, and discovered uh, more over time that, we needed to be able to cover very large landscapes. Okay. Fundamental tenet of our company is heavy ground truthing. So whenever we do our mapping or whenever we do our evapotranspiration work on a field by field basis, we do heavy ground truthing. We can talk a little bit about that later, but you can't have boots on the ground in such large landscapes efficiently or cost effectively um, for the whole state of California right. or for the Central Valley. So what we did when we start our company, we recognize that we need to understand the land-based sciences part of it, which mm-hmm. I'm a part of, right. but also integrate in a what we call a spatial sciences component. And that's people that are really skilled in GIS and remote sensing and image analysis and those right. types of things to be able to look at large landscapes. So that's kind of how we got the spatial component. Of and that's work. all going to be basically from satellite imagery. The Primarily satellite imagery for a couple of our projects. We might use a fixed wing approach. Uh, okay. Depends on the needs of the project. We don't have any um, uh, uh, obligation to any type of a of a platform. We right. do it as we need. Use the type of data we need to. Got it. Yeah. So Land IQ really isn't just a, a an a, an acreage tracking business, right? You guys are doing quite a few other things outside of. Uh, just yeah. tracking almond acreage, right, or pistachio acreage. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> we do a lot of spatial work. Uh, we run evapotranspiration. How much water does the crop do the crops use for a number of GSAs, groundwater sustainability agencies? Right. So heavily involved in Sigma. They're heavily involved in Sustainable Groundwater Management Act um, for regulatory purposes. Right. Heavily ground truthed again. Yeah. Kind of a fundamental tenet of what we do. So yeah, and there's we do a bunch of rice work up in the Sacramento Valley. We do some work in Arizona, New Mexico. Primarily, our work is in in California. Uh, which I just got back from a trip to Australia. The Almond Board of Australia is interested in mapping their yeah. almond acreage, same as the right, ABC as you did here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, how did you guys get involved with the Almond Board of California? How yeah. did that come up? That's a a great question. Um, we were doing a little bit of some side projects for them, and and. Um, we had started to do some special work. This was probably 10, 12 years ago. And the growers on the board of the Almond Board of mm-hmm. California were 
questioning whether the acreage that the USDA NAS was reporting was right. actually right because it's tricky be, and USDA NAS is doing the best job they could with the information they were using but they were doing a they do a survey approach so it didn't capture the whole population right the growers had a thought that the acreage of almonds in California as reported was too low because the growers said they're reporting average yields of whatever it was, 2,100 pounds a mm-hmm, acre, mm-hmm. whatever it was. And they say, I'm a pretty good grower and I'm not even achieving average yields. Yeah. And so what do they measure? What's the money part? That's the numerator. That's right. the pounds of mm-hmm. pounds per acre. So if you're dividing through by a number that's a little bit too small, yeah. you're going to av- you're going to uh, have overly bigger. estimate uh, the the uh, a- average yield. And this, so right. it was true. So we started in Madera County, hmm. and the Almond Board said, map Madera County. And we did it, and I think it was 2010 or something like that. And we gave them the results, and they kind of back-checked it because they knew their area. And they said, okay, you got lucky. Do it again. We yeah. think you got lucky. Do yeah. it again. Yeah. So we did it again, and good results. And then they said, okay, do the whole state. And then they said, well, we're going to – we want you to do age. And since then, we've had a number of applications. Right. So I always tell people – Get your acreage right, yeah, and then start applying Building. that information. Building, yeah, and so maybe we could go back to historical, right? So it was the USDA NAS. They would send out a mail survey, mm-hmm. and then they would follow up with a phone call, right? Mm-hmm. And that's basically how they would come up with the acreage, and that go that dates back to oh, that dates back to the probably eighties, eighties or nineties, yeah. I okay. would think, yeah, yeah. And, and and so when you do that, you have to have what uh, a kind of an escalation factor because you're not right. going to call everybody and you're not going to get a return survey from everybody right right so you have to have a kind of escalation number and the industry was was increasing rapidly right so ba- ba- probably back in the 90s or 80s it was probably a little bit more right. accurate but then as everybody started growing and more participants came in it's probably harder to get your arms around it more correct. accurately correct and so um yeah we kind of work with the almond board has asked us to work with usda nas right, now that makes sense provide the number to them in advance of their release yeah. and 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 shockingly enough, the two numbers have come together pretty. pretty <laughs> yeah, closely. I was looking. I was looking at it this morning. I was like, well, they they're pretty close these days. Yeah, that's oh. happened over the last three or four years. Okay. Yeah. And so you guys started releasing um, your uh, reports, your mm-hmm. estimates. Is that in 2019? You guys started releasing your estimates, or when did you guys start doing that? So if you look on this legend on the right hand side. Um, okay, we've, we've delivered data since 2010. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys, and when you guys have been delivering the data, you guys have been also putting out those written estimates like we see yes. at the Almond Board? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it, it, it's really, um, morphed over time. The Almond Board of California has been really proactive and really good about what they did. For we first started out, they said, do it every other year, yeah. once a year and tell us the standing acreage. That's it. So that's the 2010, 2012, right. 2014. You'll notice now it's become every year, right. and they want it twice a year. Yes. And they said, now we want removals, and now we want yeah. stressed and abandoned orchards. Right. So over time, they're always optimizing what they want to to basically stabilize the industry knowledge of the acreage estimate. But I think more than anything, the almond industry has been praised for transparency of information mm-hmm. through position reports, relatively accurate position reports, I would say, more, a lot of participation, like 98% of the packers per- – participate in the mm-hmm. position reports yeah. as well as this right it's just more transparency more information for people to have confidence in the industry itself so yeah. i think it's positive i, I think, think it's, it's all positive good too you don't want uh the coffee shop talk and yeah. and one grower saying there's 1.8 million <laughs> acres out there and the next guy saying you there's 1.3 yeah it's you, like you can argue about that when you should be focusing yeah. on other things so could you maybe go into how you release your estimates. I know you, you release two in a year. Can you kind of walk through how that works? Yeah. Uh, so we do release twice a year. The first one is in April. Yep. And that, um, and then the second one is in November, right before mm-hmm. the Almond Conference every yeah. year. <clears throat> the one in April is um, centered on bearing acreage only. Okay. And, uh, and there is a removals estimate on that up until that point. Yeah. So most of the well, historically, most of the removals occur over the winter time, but right. we're seeing more and more removals throughout year round year. throughout the year. Yeah. There's challenges associated with that. We can talk about later if you'd like. 
with the getting people into chip your orchard or take it yeah. away or whatever. So the one in April is bearing and removals. And mm -hmm. then um, then we do our ground truthing in the summer. And ground truthing is driving around and looking at it. Yeah. So we, boots on the ground. we drive, <clears throat> we map all crops for the state of California. Part of that ground truthing is um, enhanced for the Almond Board of California. And we'll focus on almond growing regions and okay. build almond density. But for the whole state of California and all of the ground truthing that we do year round, think about Imperial Valley, think yeah. about Salinas Valley, multiple cropping, blah, blah, blah. We drive about 17,000 miles a year. Mm -hmm. The way it works is we put- It's gotta be more than 17,000 miles. It's about 17,000. Well, okay. could be more, maybe yeah. it's 18, but yeah. we collect about 70,000 data points. Wow. So think about an iPad, you're going down the road, yeah. just dropping points mm -hmm. on orchards almonds, walnuts, alfalfa, fallow, grapes, whatever. Yeah. That is done in the summer in advance of the November release, which then gives us an estimate of non-bearing and an update to bearing. Got it. So there's the bearing number between April and November will never exactly match, but it'll be pretty close because there are some removals during the right, summer. For sure. So then in November, we also do a removals analysis and we also do what's called a stressed uh, or abandoned analysis. Right. And that has come on just recently because the Almond Board of California says, okay, we know the acreage really accurately. We know the age really accurately, and I can show that to you in a minute. Um, but if we're gonna really tighten up the estimate of yield, we should know which orchards are stressed. Yeah, and the yield, health. And the health of the orchard, which brings down your yield or right. the quality. Right. So we do that as well. And you have three degrees, basically, of what you consider stressed, right? This uh, like, a, is it stressed, abandoned, and then long-term abandoned, you guys yeah. classify yeah. it as? So there's, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, stressed, and then there's abandoned, and then there's, there's stress that they may find water the next year. Some yeah. growers may yeah. really stress them one year and then find water the next year and go try to recover right resuscitate that orchard right. if you will so i have a definition on you guys as long-term abandon i was looking at it this morning i thought you know this is going to be great because your long-term abandon and we'll get into this a little bit later but your long-term abandon in the 22 year is like double what it was in 21 yeah. i think yeah. right and long-term abandon you guys define as the orchards that have been abandoned prior to 21 or the 22 crop year but have not yet been removed correct so it's basically burned up and you can see that from yeah. either driving by it or it's Satellite, you know, satellite, you satellite imagery, you can satellite. see it. Yeah. You know, you can you look at a healthy, well irrigated orchard and yeah. one next door that isn't right. that wasn't you can it, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Right, and yeah. I think and I think people are really looking at that varying degrees of your stressed and abandoned and thinking that's a positive thing to be adding in as well. I think so. It'll yeah. it's we've just really really in its infancy in doing that work last year or two, and so we're always refining that. But it is telling yeah. a story, and yeah. maybe we could. Uh, Get into the latest um, report that was released in November, about 70 days ago. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think maybe some definitional terms would be good. Sure. Uh, I, I know when we would look at that USDA NAS acreage report, it would uh, say when people really didn't understand when the line was drawn for a bearing acres or mm. how old a tree should be. Mm. Right. You guys are basically saying if it's three years old, Right, it is considered bearing. I think it's four. Okay, four. Yeah, it it at four it's considered bearing. Okay, so anything less than that, one, two, and three is considered non-bearing. Non -bearing. Okay, that doesn't always fit everywhere, but right. that's we had to draw a line somewhere. Yeah, and so, but for all this mapping, we also have an age classification. I'll just show you that. So this is this is just a zoomed in area on the screen up there of the 2022 mapping, mm -hmm. but I can and it. And to get down to the individual um, field orchard itself, you can see we notch out farm shops, we take out roads. This is not um, APN uh, uh, tax assessor parcel boundaries. This is the true cropped footprint of the orchard. So we notch out those things that aren't irrigated or aren't farmed, <clears throat> and then we go back and say, okay, fine, let's let's determine the age of every orchard. And so it's the same map. But if you look at the legend um, here, you can see a color-coded legend by age and when it was planted. 
We do that by saying, first, we know it's an almond orchard. We're 98.8% sure. We're never 100% perfect. Yeah. And then we look at imagery going back in time to when that, we call it a digital fingerprint that we establish from our ground truthing that um, changes from the digital fingerprint of almonds to the digital fingerprint of bare ground. Okay. So then you know when it was planted, then you know the age. So yeah. when you're talking about bearing and non-bearing, right. back to that, you can we, figure. we figure out what that is. And so how do you, I, I think part of the non-bearing question would be, how do you know that that little tree that's been planted today is not a pistachio? Are you... Is that why you're waiting till it's four years old so you can start to identify it better? Good question. Um, <clears throat> uh, full disclosure, we can tell you a, a newly planted orchard, it's a stick sticking out of yeah. the ground, but sometimes we can't tell you what it is yet. This is the value of ground truthing. So when we ground yeah. truth, we do, we can tell you it's a young almond orchard or a very young pistachio orchard or a very yeah. young walnut orchard or prunes or whatever when you drive by it. Yeah. So we get a proportionality of what is on the ground that summer. So if we can tell you also it's a stick sticking out of the ground from a satellite. So if we drive by, uh, let's say, 100,000 acres of young perennials, we'll call them, mm -hmm. and we know that that 100,000 acres, 60% of it was almonds, when we do our classification for the whole valley with remote sensing, We'll take that proportionality and say the proportion of those young perennials, 60% of that acreage should be, was, almonds. should be almonds. We do tweak it according to regionality where you're at. For example, we know where prunes are grown, right. mostly in the Sacramento Valley, some down near Tulare and, and in Fresno County. We know where walnuts are grown. So there's some some tweaks that we do look at from regionality. And I guess in the future, you can always go back to say, hey, now we know that, that we, we right. thought it was prunes. It's actually an almond orchard. And you can go back and, yep. and, and adjust that. Correct. So yes. over time, you're going to be accurate, really. Yeah. And right. we're really accurate in the bearing acreage. Right. So, you, I mean, after a, an almond tree gets to about second year, uh, even second leaf, yeah. or a little bit past first year, we can usually tease it out from another type oh, wow. of a tree so it's usually just the first and part of the second year that yeah. we're we're really working hard at to try to figure out that numerical estimate okay because we do have a classification it's called young perennials it's a stick sticking out of the ground right. we're How only you... limited in what resolution of the imagery we yeah, got yeah there's no way you can you yeah. truly know unless we drove, unless you by, drive drove by everyone yeah. which is not yeah feasible so in the last report that was released it was the final report for the 21 growing season is that right it was it was the 22 so but it starts in september yeah of 21 correct and it goes through uh august of 22 correct okay yeah okay and the total acreage the total standing acreage for that period of time is the it has actually gone backwards by about one and a half percent right that's right for the first time in the hist well in the history that I know yeah. of all. I've been trees. saying the history too, but yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe back in the 70s, yeah, there was I, yeah. a little dip. Uh -huh. We've been mapping since 2010. Yep. And uh, and prior to that, we know that they, if you look at the historical records, it's the first time in the history of almond production in California in which the total standing right. acreage has gone down. Right. Bearing acreage is up. Bearing acreage so, is still up. So anything four years or older. Right. Right. That is up two and a half percent from last year. Mm -hmm. But it's that non bearing, so young, three yeah. and a half, three years or younger. Yeah. Right. That's down 16 and a half percent. Yeah. We, yes. And uh, we hear from uh, anecdotal sources that, uh, yeah, there's less nurseries producing trees. And, and we know. That's one source of kind of anecdotal validation, but we know driving around, we see less yeah. planted. Right. And um, yeah, so that's the case. The bearing acreage is still up a tick, but yeah. we're also seeing an increase in removals that right. we never have seen before. Yep. So that looked like it was up about 6%. Yep. So there's just over 60,000 bearing or 60,000 acres that were removed yep. from September to August. Right. Yep. So I think everybody, I think that number kind of shocked some people that it was a little bit lower than expected. Everybody was thinking, ooh, this is going to be around 100,000, you know, but you guys have another estimate coming out in mm -hmm. April, right? That we'll be covering now again, August through March. Yep. Right. So I think some of the, 
the shock you say that people thought it would be higher <clears throat> is think about we stop that removals classification at the end of September. Yeah. Growers have already made the decision. I, last time I'm going to harvest that orchard, I'm right taking now. it out. So it's going to be in this next estimate. That and you so they'll see. kind of say, well, that's I'm I've removed that or I'm going to remove yeah. that. But we do do our analysis. We do a kind of a, a, a spillover. Uh, we don't just stop looking at imagery at the end of September. We look into October. Mm. And we did see more removals in October. Yeah. And that's a more logical time when girls, okay, I I'm harvested it. Let's get it out yeah. before the rain comes so yeah. I can and take care of that. Yeah. So April removals will be fascinating. Yeah. I agree with you. And I think that's yeah. the one everybody's looking at because I think the biggest question we continue to have is, are we going to see this trend of down one and a half on total standing acreage? Is it going to... Is it going to steepen? Is it going to quicken? Which way is it going to go? I will tell you from our perspective as a uh, a nursery provider that you know we aren't seeing sales necessarily increase. I would say they're going they're headed down, yeah. right? Yeah. So that total non-bearing acreage is probably going to continue to shrink, you know. And the older spectrum of age of trees, and I think you had a breakdown in here. Uh, you know, five percent of the trees in California are over twenty-five percent or over 25 years old, an additional 5% uh, of the acres are over 21. Mm -hmm. So there's 10% of the total acreage in California that probably going to start getting pushed out. And yeah. maybe even other age classifications dependent on water and economics and things like that. Yeah. Yep. So there's a lot of variables that are impacting this right there, now. There are. So it just feels like that total acreage just feels like it's going to continue to, 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 to fall off for a little while. It might. You know? uh, yeah. It, it, there's a lot of, uh, you can talk about the economics too. Price isn't right. great. Uh, the regulatory pressures on agriculture are new and growers are figuring that out. And persistent. Uh, they're not going away. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it will be fascinating to see what the acreage numbers look like in April, then and again in November of, yeah. tw of this year, 2023. Yeah. For sure. I, I'd say, you know, I've... <clears throat> been in California agriculture my whole life and I've never seen it so dynamic mm -hmm. and that's the word I use that regulatory pressures drought issues heavy duty rain labor issues price issues you name it yeah. it's there yeah. and it's it's never been like this and and there's a there's an aging population as well in that kind of grower base right mm -hmm. where there's a, yeah. a little bit of a question mark okay do I want to continue this fight because that's kind of what it feels like we're going to have to do as a growing population or as, a, as the growers in California is you're going to have to continue to fight for your right almost to continue to farm. Right. So I, I think there's yeah, a there's, there's a lot there's a lot to the, the the industry right now, at least on the California side. So, yeah. You know. Yeah. It's uh, there's a lot of variables. Yeah. Is there anything else that we've left out? No, I just appreciate the time to talk. I yeah. love to talk about what we do and um, yeah, keep. Keep your eye on the the Almond Board of California website for the April release and um, and then the November release and yeah I'm happy to talk to anybody that want, has questions about our acreage and uh, you can just Google LandIQ.com and you can find me. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'd love to have you on again after the next one because I think I'm sure we'll have more to sure. talk about. Happy to do it. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks a lot for your time, Joel. Okay, take care. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.